They told me. Son, you're special. You were born to do great things. You know what? They were right. Hello, and welcome to the world of Bioshock, where every man is entitled to the sweat on his brow. This game holds a special place in my heart as my personal favorite game of all time. The world is rich, the art direction is eye-catching, the characters are alive, and the narrative will stay with you long after you put down the controller. In the game, we have a man named Andrew Ryan who is trying to escape the world by building a city in the Atlantic Ocean. He uses a pure capitalist philosophy, free from morals or censorship. In this environment, you have an explosion in technological advancement. And thus, the plasmid was born. And they work a little something like this. As you can see, plasmids are based firmly in the realm of fantasy. But what if we actually could bring plasmids into existence? First we need to understand where we are in this field of science today. Then we will look scientifically at how plasmids just might work. You alright, boy? First time plasmids a real kick from a mule. So where exactly are we today in genetic modification? The answer might be closer to plasmids than you think. To start, you have to dive down to the lowest working unit of life, the cell. Inside the cell, we find the deoxyribose nucleic acid, or the DNA. This is where the cell gets its instructions from as to how it should behave and build itself. It's the blueprint for life. So by modifying the DNA, you modify the way cells work and look. But this is really just the first step. According to the Human Genome Project at ORNL.gov, after DNA is used to make proteins, these proteins become dynamic and can change from minute to minute in response to stimuli inside and outside the cell. So while your DNA may stay fairly unchanged, the proteins vary even from the same DNA code. Recently, a man named Craig Venter gave a TED talk to roughly explain what his company, Synthetic Genomics, has been attempting. In this, he talks about the possibility of creating synthetic life and how they do this by completely removing the chromosome in a cell and replacing it with a brand new one. This process will be key in making plasmids a reality. Now how in the world could you make Bioshock plasmids real? Technically, they are real right now. A plasmid is a DNA molecule that is separate from the chromosomal DNA. We can use gene therapy to help us figure out how the plasmid could function. This information can be found at the University of Utah's website on gene therapy. I'll post a link in the description. Gene therapy is the process of replacing bad genetic material with good. In order to get new material into a cell without it being eaten or destroyed, you have to use a vector. A vector is simply a vehicle used to break through the membrane of a cell so that it can inject the new DNA into the cell. One of the best ways to do this is to use a virus. A virus can actually invade a host cell, inject its DNA, and, in a sense, change the cell. After a while, though, the cell is able to break down the invading material and return to normal. This would be the perfect vector for plasmids. The glowing material you see in the syringe could be a marked virus buzzing with genetic material to turn your hands into living Tesla coils. But here comes the first problem. 
you are injecting this virus directly into the bloodstream. While there are many different types of cells that make up our body, dermal tissue is fairly consistent throughout. If this virus was tagged to only infect its DNA into skin cells, you could accidentally end up with electrobolt toe or earlobe. So there has to be a way to just target the hands. You could do this by giving the virus an incredibly short half-life. Then it only affects the cells that are near the injection site before it dies off. The next problem would arise with how do you make a person's natural energy level so strong it could power the electricity needed for electrical? The answer could lie in metabolism, which is the way our body breaks down nutrients and turns it into energy. If we could drastically increase our metabolism, we might be able to support arching lines of electrical. But this opens up a floodgate of problems really quickly. Before you know it, the electrobolt slinging electrician wizard you wanted to be ended up turning you into something that really isn't considered human anymore. So I ask you, would you be willing to sacrifice your humanity for a fistful of lightning? I know this is only the plateau of a giant evolving glacier in a vast ocean of ideas, but if you have anything to add, feel free to leave info in the comments, or if you think I presented something wrong, put that down too. Remember, a smart splicer is a happy splicer.